Here we go. We're back with a uh, Final Fantasy VIII stream here on the Range Touch Network. It is last week. It was simply too hot to think, and this week it is still too hot to think. But I uh, can't delay two weeks in a row. Screw we are. Last episode, we went to Galbadia Garden. We discovered what was going on there. We had another little hallucination with uh, Laguna and crew. And uh, now, after that, we are we've been told that we gotta we gotta kill the sorceress. And now we're here in Dealing City to do that. We got encounter turns in the chat. Counter turns is subscribing with a Prime subscription. Everyone should. Take a little uh, note out of uh, Counter Turns' strategy here. And if you got one of those little Prime subscriptions running around in your theoretical pocket, go ahead and use it here. It sounds like a good idea to me. We got Modality in the chat. Hello, Modality. We got Danny Ash in the chat. Hello. We got Harry Tom Lon Lonson. Uh, Harry Tom Lon Lonson. Hello, everyone. Hello for uh, joining. Him. So, um,. Right now, we are going to, I believe, Dealing Manor is the name of it. You know, we were just kind of wandering around, making our way around Dealing City, but I think we're going to what is called Dealing Manor in order to get our instructions. Visa, oh, we're just running right through these people. But our instructions on uh, how to get where we were going. Oh, I thought I was getting in the bus, but I was just running through it. Look at all these people who are like uh, pixel people. You know, they're not models. There's a little pixel. It's like uh, when Sid turned into that. Hello, Lilifin, in the chat. Thanks for thanks for hanging out, everyone. So we're just kind of wandering around Dealing City right now because it is fun to do. Notably, we will return to this location in just a bit. And, uh... Oh, oh we're not going to Dealing Manor. We're going to Caraway Manor, which is... This is where it is. That little uh, thing that just came up. Was telling us that. Yeah, General Caraway's mansion is right through this gate, but I can't let you walk in. I was ordered not to let you through until your skills have been tested. What the hell is he talking about? This is like a straight up fetch quest. The Tomb of the Unknown King to the northeast. All you can do is go there. It's real simple, but you have to bring back proof you were there. A code number. A code number? Test of Courage. So I actually will have to write this code number down. Let me get a little pin. I got a pin. I think I got a pin. I got a pin right here. Hello, Garrelous Monolith. Hello, Scooby. Thanks so much for coming and joining us here. There's a student from Galbadia Garden yesterday, but they have yet to return from the test. All right. So we came all the way here. Now we got to go back. We got to return with his ID number. His ID number. Notably, they are assuming that this uh, high school student from Badia Garden is dead. Find what you're looking for shortly after you go in. The ID number should be written on it. Don't recommend going any further than you have to. You'll never make it back alive. So we can actually, yeah, there's like a little mappy map. So, Tomb of the Unknown King is pretty cool. I'll talk about it in just a minute. Um, and you can just leave, too. So you can buy a hint, a location displayer for 5,000 gil. Yeah, give me this. Yes. All right. And uh, let him. So weirdly enough, the ID code I believe is generated randomly every time the uh, that that you start a new game, or maybe it's like a clock issue. I don't know. Uh, but it's not. Uh, it's actually is different every time you play the game. Uh, it's a three-digit code. It's to the north. Uh, something. Northwest probably. Is that? Is it over there? Nope. Come on. There we go. I think it's over there. Is that what he said? Did he say northeast or northwest? That looks like where it should be. Let's just go. Let's see what's up. It's a little monument looking zone. Sadly, it's not 451. Modalia pointing out that we're going to have to navigate some hubs and spokes here was absolutely, definitely the case. And uh, we're going to have, uh, you know, quite a few battles here. Not unhappy to take battles. Uh, you know, I think basically at this point in the game, we could totally uh, break the thing if we wanted to. Uh, you know, we could spend a couple hours and basically uh, use the junction system to totally warp the game. And, uh, but I do want to get some AP and stuff like that here. So, yeah, there's the tomb over there. 
Hey, Wellhouse says uh, they really enjoyed the It podcast. Thanks so much. Glad you enjoyed the It podcast. Thanks for listening to it. Make sure you're subscribed to Just King Things. Uh, you can hear a podcast that's just as good every month. Over at rangetouch.com. So let's see what this uh, creature, this Umber Hulk looking, looking, looking fella, berserks. So I actually think these these creatures, if I remember correctly, are actually pretty hard to kill. I'm not a hundred, I'm not one hundred on that. Also, kind of interesting that uh, I haven't really found very many more creatures to uh, to draw scan from, which means we're kind of getting. Oh yeah, look. So that's that is the status effect junction. You can see that they are now, I think, zombified or poison. I don't remember what green is. It's probably poison, but. Um, so that's the status effect junction that we've talked about a few times here that I believe I got from Siren. Uh, the JMAGs, no, the episodes will not be that long every month. Okay, so obviously this is not poison, so it must be zombie because they, uh, or no, maybe poison only triggers every time they do something. So let's see. I wasn't paying close enough attention. I was looking at the chat. Hello, Circadian Wolf. Also, maybe zombie means you don't do anything? I can't remember. I think these things have like a huge amount of health, so I'm gonna have... Dang, I missed that. Let's just do some some GF and... Oh, Diabolos, we haven't seen uh, Diabolos' little summon animation, so let's, uh, let's just do that for funsies. That's the thing I will say broadly in this game is that uh, a, lot, a lot of enemies just don't. You know, if they're not, like, in a... I think uh, in complicated battles, in the sense of, like, when there's, like, five or six little enemies running around, uh, uh, they... Uh, when there's, like, five or six enemies around, running around, often battles are pretty interesting, but singular, singular ones don't. Yeah, I think uh, Zombie in this game, uh, I think... Ooh, Renzo Kukin just, like, straight up for funsies? Oh, that's right, because his health is so high. For some reason, I think it, it uh, involves the HEB gauge in this game as well, Lilithan. I don't know why I think that. I, I haven't done any research on Zombie again. I'm, people can definitely check that out. Renoa's hair disappeared in that moment. That was weird. This is what uh, got a bunch of bats flying into this big old inky blob. Yes, hello, Julia Pester. We got this big old inky blobbo. Diablos, who we fought last time, if you remember that, last time was strange. He's going to grab this. He's going to reach into the inky blob, which birthed him. But I love how it stretches. This Looney Tunes looking ass blob. All kinds of occult shit going on. <clears throat> Turns into a bunch of bats, flies off, does 138 damage, kills him. Yes. So this is an interesting way, uh, what you're seeing there is a, a really interesting way of like abusing the limit break system. Uh, which is that uh, the when you're in danger health, like yellow health, right? That's determined not by like some, you know, objective stance, but it's just a proportion of your total HP. And limit breaks trigger when you hit the yellow, or they are more likely to trigger when you hit the yellow. So you can just give someone a bajillion HP. And so their low health is perfectly appropriate for level, right? Like 600 hit points is like totally appropriate for what we're doing here. But uh, now we get basically free runs of Kukin every turn. That we want. Oh, here we go. Aw, damn it. Could have got some scans. Yeah, Sella, no, we can't. That's too much damage. We can't do that. We got our GFs leveling up. They'll do more damage and stuff like that. Yeah, we got Zell holding down the right side. See all fiber. No scan for me, of course. That's okay. But yeah, so Squall, if you remember from last time, has a bunch of hit points. So we spent a bunch of money. How much money did I spend? I spent uh, 5,000 on this hip uh, little like marker of where you are. I really love this. This is great. Float. They're saying float. What does that mean? Couldn't ask them. So we got protect here. So basically what's going on in this thing, in this uh, dungeon, so it's a straight up dungeon, it's kind of a puzzle dungeon. What we have to do is we have to go, oh, we can't, I can't hit the button yet, but we go inside of the dungeon 
And we have to... Uh, let's do this. Uh, we have to hit some stuff. We have to, like, go in, and there's a uh, grate that you have to close. And it makes the water level rise or fall, something like that. And then there's a boss to fight in the middle of it. Um, the boss is a GF, so we want to do it. But it might be hard, so I might die here. I'm just letting you know. Um, and, uh, you know, so we'll figure it out as we go. <laughs> Zeno, that's, uh, yeah, that's a great picture, Zell. So this is helpful. This X here is at the bottom of the map would not normally be here. This is something that we paid money for. And it's very helpful because you'll see right now. So here's screen one. Here's screen two. So this is going to give us our ID number. It's 32. I thought for some reason that it was a, a three digit number. But then we get to this part. So it's like we could go in here, get that and then leave. Right, like this could be the end of the quest, but I actually kind of want to do it. So I believe what we have to do first, I think we have to go to the left. I don't remember exactly. We'll just, we'll play it by ear. We've got plenty of healing items and, and spells and things like that. So, but you see there's just repeating screens, right? So it's a, it's a puzzle thing and you could, you know, when I played this as a teenager, I just drew the map on a sheet of paper and then did it that way. So we need to go left here. All right. So this is oh, this is the stone wall. Okay. What does it tell us? Oh, wow. Feels like I've been here forever, right? So there's like some straight up uh environmental storytelling going on here. I can't take it any more physically or mentally. I'm not qualified to be a seed. Follow these directions. So so he tells you how to get back to the exit. All right, so that's the wrong way. So we got to go all the way around the center, I believe. Wow, Refactor is talking about just doing this off of memory. I think the last time I played it, I, I did it off of uh, memory. And maybe that X was never, wasn't there in the original thing? I don't remember. But we will just keep following, that, following the uh, thing here. And I don't remember which of the things we're supposed to go to first, so... see what this says. So I guess we were supposed to go all the way to the other side first. A slime! And a, a bat. I think that thing's got scan. The flying thing. It doesn't. Let's do a little draw. Yeah, you just want to get a little draw in every here or there. Does he have scan? No, he's got shell. That's cool. Let's get a little shell. Everybody can, everybody can get a little shell. And then we'll Renzo Kukin our way out of this. And we're going to try to keep Squall kind of in the Renzo Kukin zone. Um, until the boss. Which which then we might make a different call. Yeah. Let's just start attacking. And the way that I'm getting that, uh, you can hit Y, you know, on the original controller. Wow, that thing died immediately. Uh, you can hit Y on the uh, on the PlayStation controller or whatever it is on the Xbox, right? The uh, I guess it's the Y button still, or the triangle button on on the uh, it's a triangle on the PlayStation controller and a Y on a Microsoft controller. Wow! So these things are, are resistant to uh, uh, physical damage, which I totally forgot about here. But we should be able to like zap it here. Let's see what we can do. Maybe use, a, maybe use a fire. Maybe use a GF in a minute. One of those things, we'll get there. But they just don't... They wiggle and they jiggle and they don't like to get hurt. I love that. I love that it's like a little slappy thing it does. I don't... Uh, I don't think that... The... the Because, uh, you know, I think a lot of people like the speed increases in these games, and uh, it doesn't really do a lot for me one way or the other. I don't I don't mind uh, the speed at which the game proceeds. I will say Final Fantasy IX is, is uh, one of the ones, the remasters, that I did really appreciate the speed increase, though, because the battle animations in that game are pretty extensive. I'm going to summon a GF here. Only five damage. Jeez. 
Bing, bang, bong, bing. Perfect. I didn't get a rough divide there? That's wild. Yeah, the blob, I mean, basically, I think the, the gist of this battle, right, the, the setup of these two creatures is uh, you're supposed to draw magic from the other one and cast it onto this one. Right, like, that's that's how you're supposed to, I think, complete this encounter. But uh, we'll, we'll just do it with a, with a GF here. Doing my boost. Of course, move my head so everyone can see the boost. Now, if you have not caught the previous VOD, so this is your first time, checking out what we're up to uh, in the streams, you can go to youtube.com slash ranged touch uh, and uh, get the other VODs. So you can see the four episodes up till now. It's about mm, seven hours of stuff. Yes, melt. They look cool. I like it. It definitely, Garrelous Monolith pointing out that uh, that slime looks like it'd get messy, dirty really easily. Agreed. All right, let's see what this one says. This is going to be another message from the person who was trapped here. One big maze full of danger. All right, so I tell you repeatedly how to get back out. Uh, we want to go back. I think this is the, the thing that falls. So we need to go here. And you always have to kind of remember what position you are because your your angle is determined by where you came from, right? So it's always kind of like positionally. So we're facing south, so we need to go left to go to this, this corner angle where we are. I remember that being very frustrating when I was a child playing this game. I think this is right, right? I think I'm supposed to be going to the edges. Is that not true? Yeah, okay, here we go. So I believe the deal, I'm not 100% here, but I believe the first thing that happens is we gotta find a mini boss, and then we gotta fight boss boss. Sadly, the back attack thing uh, from previous games. I'm not gonna rinse a cook in here because you actually don't need to. But, uh,. The, you know, like Final Fantasy VII, if you're back attacked, just hitting uh, run away, spinning you around, that doesn't work here. And here we are going to heal Squall. The, the X is not on the original map, you have to pay money for it, but I don't remember if you could pay money for it in the original or not. It definitely was not there at the thing. I do remember being very money... Uh, needy in this game um, in the first, you know, whatever, however many times I played it. In the sense of, like, I, it seemed so much more difficult. Yeah, so here's our first little fellow we gotta fight. The mysterious statue. He's one of the two brothers. So we're gonna fight him one time. Oh, he's so cool. So this is actually kind of a legit. I remember it being a legit, uh, difficult kind of fight to do. I don't. I don't know if that's going to be true or not, but we're going to see. And so from this, we're going to do about 800 damage or so to him every time. Maybe 700 somewhere in there. Oh no, close to a thousand. So we might be able to do this. So every, all the time that he is on the ground, every turn that he is on the ground, let me see if she, does she have scan? She does, but we only have four, all right. Every, every like tick that he is on the ground, basically, uh, he is going to heal because he's like an earth elemental dude. Um, and so the way that you deal with this, I'm, I'm less concerned about it in this very moment than I am with the next fight. But the way you deal with that is by casting Float. Oh, that's easy. No, oh, maybe this will be easier than I remembered it being. But so the way you, you deal with it is by, wow. Oh, we had someone losing. Damn, I got called a bastard and jumped over my head. <laughs> um, all right, so let's go here. Um, the way you deal with that is by casting float on him. So you, you literally float him above the ground so that he can't do anything. Um, and it's pretty cool. We need to look at our GFs because we were like summoning or getting some mag here. And that's no good. Ugh, disgusting. Um, let's get mid-level magic from other magic. It's going to be pretty good. Um, elemental attack junction still going here. Mental defense here. It's almost done. GF HP 10%. It's disgusting to me. 
Ugh. Uh, let's get, I guess, an RF ability. Boost on, on Siren doesn't matter a lot. HP junction here. Okay, cool. Whoops, need to actually save, so we're gonna, uh, we're gonna save our game again after I just did that little change. And then we're gonna move away. So we need to go over, oh, uh, I think all the way across. Let's go all the way across first. Uh, I don't because the the uh, the like the float thing here is like it's like a gimmick fight. I wonder what happens if I just go straight here. It's like a gimmick fight. Oh, so I can't remember if I need to go north or all the way across. I mean, well, it doesn't really matter. So we have to go to one of these edges, and I just don't remember which which edge it is. Um, and basically what we gotta do is we have to trigger the other uh, floaty float thing. These screen load things. So this, so these like screen fade fade outs is partially the reason why we're on the PC version on the remaster. Uh, the on the disc version of this game, even with like a PS2, you know, slightly better load times or whatever, it's still pretty rough. It's rough stuff. All right, we're just gonna run from this fight. Now, if you run from fights too often, you uh, your seed level goes down. <laughs> so you gotta be kind of careful about that. But that that's just a little bit time consuming for us here. So I think we have to go to this one. And the thing is down. Yeah, okay. There's a draw point. We got Cura, that's cool. And I, don't we do something here? Yeah. So it's letting water go through. Um, it's like the water system is working its way there. And I think we gotta go north now to the thing there. This whole uh, puzzle system, really, it's very misty to me. Uh, but like in a game that's not designed <laughs> for misty kind of stuff, right? Um, I wonder what we can see here. Nothing one one of the thing. Hmm. It's like that Greek myth guy who can't be beat as long as he's touching the ground. Yeah, kinda. It's the guy isn't that the guy that uh, Hercules picks up, squeezes real hard, and give him a big old hug? Give him a bear hug. I think we're growing all the way up here. Oh, that's interesting. Refactored. I didn't. I didn't really think about that. That it would interact with some other stuff. So, so we got float here. So let's give it to Renoa. And I think we we have to like go over here. I think. Yeah. There we go. I will say a problem with the remaster is like some of those things that are in the background are really hard to see here. So. All right. Cool. So with all of this done, I believe that we. Whoops hate that. So I believe we walk straight here? I'm not 100%. Uh, basically for this boss, we're going to just try to out DPS the healing thing. Casting float is cool, but uh, not. It's like a lot to manage. Alright, so we can't. We gotta go all the way to the entrance and then do it from that direction. I couldn't remember exactly which direction it comes from. Ooh! Ooh! Scary. Can we draw? We can draw protect. He draw and he protect. I really like the uh, enemy design here. There's just some some great like real uh, Final Fantasy VIII full of like weird little grubby guys who live in the ground. You know. It is interesting that we're not getting a uh, rough divide here. Yeah, Armadado fell over, so he takes more damage now. It's 
wicked rad. He's gonna do a little hop when he comes back. Yeah, that little... Ugh. I think that's so cool. Right, and we would do a lot more damage. If, uh, yeah, when he's fallen over, but... So maybe actually what I should do is I should wait for Squall's HEB gauge to come back, because he's gonna come back before... Oh. Maybe? No, here we go. Sweet. You can see, like, 50 more damage per hit here. Oh, getting rough to ride? Nope. I love it. What a great little creature. I like that little combat. I like a little, like, uh, you know, combat mechanic. I think it's something, that's something that Final Fantasy XIII was pretty good at. It was, like, just inside the fight, for whatever reason, there's, like, little touches that you're involved in. I'm gonna, actually going to run all the way out to the uh, entrance here. Or not entrance, but the... Uh, the uh, side thing here, whatever this is called. And, uh... And, uh, hit the save game thing. Hey, wow. Even more. So, draw points come back all the time. Or, you know, that's like part of their deal, they respawn, but that's pretty quick for a respawn. I don't know actually what determines that timer. I'd be very curious if someone knows what it is. Um... But like I said, I do like there's this like kind of weird, misty style, like adventure gamey puzzle here. Uh, that's just like kind of in the middle of this Final Fantasy dungeon. Mm -hmm. Nope. Dum, 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 dum. I do like the uh, the sound it makes when. Also, they give you like a whole thing. Yeah, M Y S T style, misty style. It makes me it makes it makes my eyes water. It makes me get uh, all emotional. Okay, we're gonna swing a left here, and then we go north. Yep, and then we go left. There we go. Okay, let me make sure everything is good. Let's go ahead and use some potions on uh, Renoa, Zell. Get them all the way up. Let's see who has float. Uh, just, okay. Float is on her. All right, rearrange manual. Let's put float. Wait. Let's put float where Thunder was. So let's just put float in front. So Renoa can cast float. On some of them, and I'll show you how the mechanic works, but I do believe, based on how we just, like, fought the, this other creature, that we should be good. So, Sacred is little bro and big bros with him. Now's your chance to run away, man. I always thought it was really funny that this, uh, like, elemental demon thing was like, man, bro. Look, Zell's whispering. What a rude whisper. Bro! So, oh, we got this big translucent fella. He appears right here. He's a little guy, and he only speaks in small letters. Yeah, bro. These guys crashed the tomb. Like, this is such a weird little thing that, like, does not fit in the rest of this game at all. Not bad for a human. The puny one's the elder brother? Bro, they're making fun of us. I'll show you not to judge a book by its cover. I love it. It's great. This is like what Final Fantasy does. So they got these spiky balls, so um, yeah, we're going to let's cast some float here. And you can see that he is healing a huge amount. And he hits hard. It's not bullshit. We might have to take two swings at this. This this is actually a harder harder fight than uh, than one might think. Let's see if we can draw so Oh, I, th I thought we could draw the thing from him. All right, well, let's 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 not worry about that then. We're just gonna do uh, GFs here, like straight up, and we'll GPS down the small one. For some reason, I thought that you had to draw a Minotaur from them, maybe or brothers from them, but maybe they just drop it when they die. Can someone look that up for me? Final Fantasy is about anything anyone wants it to be. Yep, 
Yeah, I didn't say there was no evaluation into like whether it was good or not, this, but this just is what Final Fantasy does. <laughs> Alright, we let's do a little Kira here. Get Squall of the Danger Zone. So you can see part of the issue here with the speed of the battle is just like the float only lasts so long and you don't get that many like straight up attacks at, out of it here. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Julia Pester. I just couldn't remember. For some reason, I thought it was a draw one, where the next GF that we get is a missable one that you have to draw, so... I think maybe I just had them conflated in my head. And I do think for this run, um, or this, you know, Let's Play stream, whatever it is, I do think I'm gonna try to get all the GFs. I'll, I'll need to look at a chart to see if there's any that, like, are particularly annoying to get. But I don't think there are other than the deep sea, whatever it's called. When Ronoa goes translucent with this model, it, it looks pretty weird compared to everyone else's. It looks like she like devolves back to her like previous unremastered model. I would like to get a scan in here. Yeah, we're not gonna be able to get that here. So let's, let's do Ifrit here. Right, mowers just just kicks ass here. They don't have scan. Nope. So we're gonna GF. And you can see that he is back on the ground. Hoof. Uh I might die here. Uh the reason I might die here is they just hit me with that big attack, and now uh I won't be able to heal any of my people. Right, okay. Might have to take a second so we can get this. I would like to get a scan in before I die, or if I do die. Uh, it is interesting that you can cast life. You can draw cast life out of sacred here. Wow, that was weird. Uh, which means you can use that to resurrect your people, and I will probably do that with Squall here in just a second. Oh, okay. Bro, I lost! It is. It is, it is a, a scary movie. All right, can we draw? No, so no life there, and I don't have item on this. Do I have life here? No. All right, then yeah, we're gonna have to just like straight up do it. I mean, that's the thing. If Squall has enough hit points, we might be fine. A totally beefed up boost there. It is kind of interesting that, uh, you know, you don't get experience if you, if your, uh, people die. They don't get experience from the thing. I think they don't get experience from bosses anyway, but she, her GFs won't get AP, I believe, and that, that is actually kind of annoying. So we got a bunch of stuff. We're getting Sacred's cards, pretty powerful. 40 AP, so, like, everyone's just learning their stuff. So there's, like, big reasons at this point, and now we've got brothers. But there's big reasons at this point in the game to do what what we just did there, to like take the time to do this fight. And this is rad. Like this, uh, when I did this when I was like, uh, you know, uh, a teenager, this blew my mind. Just some knights here who have been trapped by the two knight spirits, trapped by the two brothers. Right? I'm now free from this cramped stone coffin. Is it really necessary? He's been he's been trapped in a tomb this whole time, and he's been considering: is it necessary to entomb those traveling to the other world? Just giving you some existential shit, right? So now we have Minotaur and Sacred cards. They are they are pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and just use magic here. Let's use life. Let's bring Renoa back to life. We also want to check out our GF that we have. So this is Brothers. You can see in this kind of hierarchy or in this kind of uh, flowchart of what you get when. Uh, theoretically, could have gotten brothers before um, Diablo in, in terms of what the game kind of thinks about what you're doing. Um, we can do some cool stuff. So let's go ahead and it doesn't really matter who brothers goes to. So let's just throw brothers on Renoa and let's go ahead and do some uh, defense junctioning here. And because uh, there's an HP, someone, uh, one of the, the GFs she has, has the HP plus 20%. She just gets 20% free HP here. 
So it's awesome. So now she's got 921. So there's all kinds of, um, with the GF system, there's so much kind of process stuff of how they combine together in pretty cool ways. But we can check out what Brothers is up to. HPJ, Strength J, um, Spirit J, right? So like really helping us out with some physical stuff. HP 20, which we've already got. HP 40. We can have Cover, which is a command that takes an attack. Uh, you know, it, uh, I think there's like a percentile chance for another party member. It's fine. If you have like one party member early who has a huge amount of HP, it can be pretty good to put it on there. Uh, we're probably just going to get boost first. Um, and we, and again, we just have to kind of keep track because what happens, you, there's no hierarchy or, or uh, queue of what you can get from these, you know, the order in which these GFs um, learn their abilities. So as soon as they learn one, you got to go like back into the menu here and do it. Um, let's get status magic since we have so many people um, who are learning statusy stuff. We're close on that. Close on that. We don't want that. Let's get strength 20% here. Um, we don't want GF HP 20%. Uh... I guess magic 20% will be fine. We can start having some dedicated casters, and there we go. We are good to go. I do want to use some curas. Where are you? Some curas, and that'll just like knock everyone back up to full. Close to it, and then we can leave. Awesome. Yeah, that, that funky ghost, not a fight, just, just a guy. Uh-oh. I mean, I really love this, like, weirdness of, of what's going on here. I would I'd be so curious about the development story of why this is in this game, as opposed to, like, all the other things on this planet. And uh, I've never heard. I've never seen an interview or a translated interview or anything about, like, why this kind of sticks out in such a weird way. And really, lots of the extra stuff in this game sticks out in a weird way. Um, let's just go ahead and uh, summon brothers so you can get a sense of what it looks like. It's fun. Draw some, uh, we'll just stock some stuff while we're here. Stock some, uh, shells, right? Yeah. Those are pretty sweet. Yeah, it is kind of funny. I mean, this is like all the Final Fantasy games, but it's like how quickly you go from, wow, isn't that a weird creature? It's like, you know, uh, uh, historically accurate uh, demon creature, uh, angel to being like, oh, there he is. The big wheel, angel. Devil. Isn't that fun? Yeah, they're not called... I mean, I could have renamed them bros if I wanted to. But yeah, so their thing is called Brotherly Love. So, check it out. I can hold the boost button to make the numbers go away. So he picks his bro up and throws him into the sky. Right? So they play... They, Play rock, scissors, paper. He throws his bro into the sky. His brother cries. Smashes through the enemies. The enemies fall to earth. And he turns into a blinky cloud. It's really a really comedic kind of deal. I love it. Uh, of course, that creature up in the sky did not die because it, it is not on the ground. <laughs> and so then, therefore, falling from a great height doesn't hurt it. There's some wonderful, goofy consistency in this video game. <laughs> that I find delightful. Julia Pester in the chat says, I probably spent four hours finding the tomb and another four just navigating inside the tomb, but nowadays it takes 15 minutes. I, yeah, I mean, I definitely this was like a hours long thing the first time I did it because like, how would you know what order to do stuff in or even that you could do it? I mean, Looking at some of that stuff on a CRT, on a little CRT, was kind of hard. I'm doing, like, no damage. I'm going to keep, because she has shells stocked. I'm going to start doing that, and let's uh, just keep stocking shell here. Yeah, the, the, oh, the Jelly's animations across the board are just amazing. The, the and I will say in a, in a broad and general sense, the animations in this game and the animations in Final Fantasy IX are probably some of the best in the series. Um, just raw, you know, because they're weird. That's part of it. 
Uh, but, you know, they, they have such unique animations for getting hit and, and damaging things and their attack animations. And Final Fantasy IX is actually a problem. It just it begins to take up a huge amount of time just to fight normal enemies and, like, sit through all of the incredibly detailed animations that everything in the game has. But, damn, they look good. You know, hard, hard to be mad about it. All right. Well, I got my creature from beyond the grave to come hit you for 2,000 damage, so... Thankfully, that worked out. All right, here we go. And we can do this too, right? So I can go to magic now, and I can exchange, and I can go to, where are you? Shell, go to Renoa, give all. And she's got it uh, equipped to something, right? So she's just like now way more powerful. She's double as powerful as she was before on that particular stat, this junction two. So game starts getting, uh, you know, if you know how these systems work, game game starts getting uh, pretty coolly complicated, I think. But again, you can also probably see if you're not familiar with the game, you can probably see how committing some time into this and just maxing some of these things out makes your life a little bit easier um, and why people say this game is broken or easy to break. Um, but you don't have to do that. You can just play the game. Hey, WRS Hamilton, thanks so much for the Prime subscription. I really appreciate it. Ooh, yeah, but Eve Goldenwoods is talking about the uh, in Little Animations, uh, the way that Zell uh, grips his wrist with the other. He does that like, he's like pulling his glove on tighter, maybe. Something like that. We'll pay more attention to it the next time it happens. And remember, 32 is the number one. Hey, it's our guy up there who has scanned. So we're gonna we're gonna do a, a round of stocking here. Um, of scan. Also has float. It's interesting. Just so we can get a few more scans in the mix. It's legitimately like a good thing. I, I think there's an RF skill that gets it, you know, a refinement skill, but I don't know what it is. So. Uh, maybe utility magic? I'm not quite sure. Someone could look that up if they wanted to. But you also don't have to. You can do whatever you want. Again, if you got a Prime subscription uh, running around that you're not using, think about spending it on Range Touch. We use the money to do stuff with. I just bought uh, a new microphone. Oh, it's actually right here. I haven't had a chance to install it, but I bought a new microphone. Right here. I bought it with Patreon money. Um, so, and so the money that you support us with legitimately goes to making better products, uh, better stuff in a general sense. Uh, need a new microphone because this one is, uh, putting some weird delays occasionally in our, our podcasts when we record for four and a half hours. Um, and I think I've had it for four years or something like that. So it might be getting toward end of life. I'm going to put it in the closet and use it for mobile stuff, uh, which I've done before. <laughs> the, this bird does look like a warlock. <laughs> it's a very specific thing, but very cool uh, to point out. Oh, also, by the way, if you're like here and you're checking things out or whatever, and you're like watching these streams, just when well, you hit the follow button, that would like legitimately just help out. The more numbers we have, the more easy it is to uh, make other numbers happen. So if you enjoy watching me fight this bird, hit the follow if you haven't already. Oh. 100 kills. Isn't that kind of interesting? Oh, only 100 kills. Maybe that's 100 battles. I don't know if you could see that. That was my Steam Achievo. I know you do have to have numbers to make numbers counter turns. It's a huge part of the internet economy. You got to have numbers to make the numbers. This, the VOD for this, by the way, uh, you know, I'll say this at the end of the stream as well, but the VOD for this should go up on Saturday. In case you didn't catch the whole thing. RIP. Thanks, Dismal Undead, for subscribing with your thing. Oh, you know what? Uh, Danny, are you, uh, you still in the chat? Let me know if you're in the chat. Because I would like you, if you're in the chat, please tell me when Prepare to Give is. I would like to talk about that here, but I have forgotten the exact day. If you're not here, that's okay. We're going to go ahead and get Strength Junction. Lilifin is here. Lilifin knows. 
It's July 16th. We're going to be doing Prepare to Give Again. It's going to be here, uh, here on this Twitch channel. Um, it's uh, Elden Ring. We're going to be doing All Remembrances round of Elden Ring. We're going to be raising money for charity. I don't think we figured out exactly which charity yet this year. You know, we kind of bounce around a little bit. It's not always the same one every year. We haven't fully decided, I don't think, but we will announce all that information soon. Um, and we're going to have some donation incentives and things like that before it even begins, or maybe like in the first couple hours, actually. So we'll uh, we'll see what happens. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's really exciting. That's another reason to follow the channel is if you want to see Danny speedrun all of all remembrances in Elden Ring. I think it takes about 13 hours. He's been practicing. He's probably practicing right now. I believe he told me that's how he was going to spend his Thursdays for the next month, was working on Elden Ring. As in developing Elden Ring. He's going to invent a new Elden Ring. So it's really weird that we've fought this bird so many times. I think, personally. But people love to fight that bird. Ah, there we go. Renzo Kukin. Boop, beep, bop, boop, beep. Dang, really? Okay, there we go. I guess that's true. I guess that is the plot of Elden Ring, is making a new Elden Ring. Uh, get, you a, get you a lord who can invent, invent a new Elden Ring, am I right? Alright, so let's save our game. Yes, you should be excited to give. Pender Shrog, it's fun. It's fun to give for charity. It's fun to donate when Danny dies. You know. I can't remember. I had to, what, was it Dark Souls 2? I had to... Oh, I could have rented a car. God, I forgot about that. Uh, oh, no, I think it was Dark Souls 1 where I had to donate a bunch of money because uh, he defeated... Uh, uh, Bing Bong Johnson <laughs> when uh, on the first go. I can't remember. The, the big knights got Artorius. Yeah, it was Manus too. Oh, was it Manus that I had to donate for? I couldn't remember which of the two uh, it was. Uh, it does kind of look like a flying reptile. That's true. Well, what's the difference between a flying reptile and a bird? There's not one. Think about it that way. All right, so we are back here to Caraway Mansion. We are here to say what the answer is, and the answer is zero. Oh, no. You have to enter from the ones first. That's wrong. <laughs> uh, you shouldn't just guess. All right. So the ones is two, the tens is three, and the hundreds is zero. So I guess that technically is a three digit number. Just one digit is zero. Animations in this game are great. Very good. Palam and Galbadia Garden are joining forces with a general from the Galbadian army. Why? No point in thinking about it. Seeds aren't meant to question why. So Renault is asking, remember from all the stuff before, you know that, that the seeds are meant to be contracted out to the Timber Owls. Renault says, don't leave me in this house. Uh, the seeds are contracted and they have to do what she says. Yeah, there's some weird stuff going on that with the <laughs> with that numeric system. <laughs> Ones first. I'm sure there's some sort of technical reason for that that I'm ignorant of. So we're going into Caraway Mansion. Caraway is the general of the Galbadian army. So as Squall just said, right, Galbadia Garden, so like their mercenary training, you know, thing that's located in the state of Galbadia. It is involved in the, in the plot to assassinate the sorceress. The uh, Galbadian army, it seems like, or the general is involved in that. So it's pretty, pretty weird. So we're just going to talk to everybody here, see what they have to say. This is Irving, of course, who we haven't had a lot of face time with. I can't talk to him, it seems. Quistus. So everyone's having to wait here. I think I'm supposed to just go to the door, I believe. I'm, I believe I'm wrong. There we go. All right. So Renoa seems to know this person. I'm going to go complain. Me when I go to Shoney's. 
Now we're gonna go complain. <laughs> oh, and by the way, this is my house. That's right. The leader of anti-Galbadian rebels, this this truly rebellious teenager, is the daughter of the Galbadian general. How about that? He's got a great outfit on. Look at that. Look at his little. He's got a little, his little anime hair scriggle flying off his face. Cool. So she left, and they immediately kidnapped her. Have I been saying Callaway? I mean Caraway. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it is Phoenix right here. Oh, I can walk around here. So the father's a top military officer and the daughter's a member of the anti-government faction? That's bad. Really bad. <laughs> oh, Zell. The Jinko genius. <laughs> it's a serious problem. I hate it. I hate it when my I hate it when my daughter becomes a seditionist. Well, don't worry about it. All right. So he's going to give us the deal. Garden Destructive and Renoa's uh, orders have the same value. Hmm. Squall's basically saying, "I'm taking your daughter, bro." Oh yeah, Zell's going to say it out straight up. Oh, did his uniform get changed through Cadian Wolf? Like in like in the remaster? Scooter's corner zell is important. There's really one quarter of the screen zell, it's not corner zell. Let me explain the plan in another room. Alright, so we got uh, Renoa can't be part of our team anymore. So let's just put, I don't know, Quistus in here. We haven't had a lot of Quistus in the game so far. And then we'll Junction Exchange and go from there. Oh, in the original Japanese release, his armband is red. And it was changed blue for the international release because he would have looked like a Nazi. I see. Interesting. So now we're going to walk through. This is such a funny thing to me. Uh, we're going to walk through the city and the general's going to explain to us how to how to to assassinate a government dignitary. Right, it definitely would. Uh Neon <laughs> Ginnig, I I don't Oh, I see on Irving's. Gotcha. So he's telling us the thing, two teams during the operation, Gateway Team will enter the Gateway and stand by. Gate Gateway is the Arc de Triomphe looking thing over there. The sniper Team will stand by at the front of the Presidential Residence until the ceremony is over. This is where they're right. Right where we're standing. So, like, the General himself is walking us through this operation. So we need a Gateway Team and a Sniper Team. So there's going to be a ceremony and then a parade. Gate will open. And you don't want to cause commotion. Once the gate opens, sniper team moves out. Sniper team gets in position. Waits for the sorceress to get in the way. There's a hatch. It's going well, adult witch. Thanks for coming on by. Everyone, it's so funny to me you all love Irving. So there's going to be a uh, carousel clock up there and a sniper rifle. And, and the sniper team will go get it and then do some snipering. Sniper, yes, sniping. He's really, look, he's running. He's like, it, it will go this way. It goes this way. Now it goes this way. Thank God I'm getting paid for this. Okay. Okay. So he's just basically, he's literally walking us through the whole thing. Anyone who is outdoors could be like, why is the general of the military walking around with a bunch of teenagers on the exact parade route? That seems fishy to me. 
It really does. I mean, pa yes. It, it, uh, wouldn't it make a lot more sense if this were like, uh, uh, you know, a little model, you know? There's something going on in this game with, like, models and, uh, uh, like, practice, right? There's the thing with the train. Now there's this. There's something going on with a thing that stands in for the other thing in a broad sense. And that kind of is what the plot itself is about. We, we will learn about that in, like, disc three, essentially. Right? So the plot here is the, the sorceress is going to be in a parade. They're going to get in that Arc de Triomphe looking thing. Once she's in there, they're going to close the gate and the sniper team will shoot her while that's happening. Take the open shot. <laughs> uh, Eve Goldenwood says, yeah, I first played this game about age 11. So it was my first exposure to hot anime people and Irvin's intro blew my little mind. You're free to go anywhere. Stay out of trouble. Who do you think we are? So it's all in Squall's head, though. I mean, it really says we're just seeds. All right. Cool. So I think we can upgrade our weapons here. Yes, Garrulous Monolith, he is. And we'll learn a little bit more about that in a minute, about why he might be involved, you know, and not. Let's play a game of Triple Triad. So we got some good cards now, uh, which means we can also lose good cards now, right? We got Diablos, we got Minotaur. So let's lose, let's lose some good cards. I do think it's very funny that uh, some people in the VODs and I guess some people uh, here uh, get real upset when I, when I lose my good cards. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't particularly really care, but I do think it's fun to play the game every now and again. Look at the AI making its decisions here. So we are going to, let's do that. Now an A is really good, but they also don't have anything that's like a nine or anything, so. What's going on here? That's true, Juliet Pester. That's a really good, interesting thing to point out that, that Renoa is, is kind of getting this from her own father. That, that that the desire to uh, demonstrate things really well. All right, so what do we want here? Ooh, so we want this, right? And then that, and then we win. Oh, we don't win. Oh, it's a draw. Phew. Okay. Um, I would love to upgrade my weapons. Can someone please, this is, this is, uh, an actual request. Can someone look to see if I can upgrade my weapons in Dealing City? I don't know. And also don't know where you would do that. Um, I'm assuming some sort of shop here. But I, and I think you can. I just don't know where. Not at the hotel, but maybe on the next screen? Just running down the street. They're really tailgating that car here. So I think maybe here is there going to be a... Maybe in one of these shops. Is this an actual shop I can go into? Yeah. Yeah, okay. This is a buy shop. So I think... I'm stuck in the thing. Shopping arcade. That's what someone is saying. Panda by name. Thank you, Panda by name. Is it maybe here? Yeah. Uh, but I don't have any copies of... Oh, that's very funny. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, let me see if I can buy the weapon thing. One moment. So, basically, the, the way that uh, weapon upgrades in this game, they don't really do a whole lot. They kind of change hit percentage, and they give you different limit breaks. That's kind of the deal. Uh, dang. Uh, but what you have to do is you have to find uh, a weapons mag, weapons magazine, and to get to, like, learn about the new things you can get. And I don't think I have one yet. Weapons... Uh, monthly March. But these are the standards. Okay. So, yeah. Never mind. I've only collected one. Refactored. So, I think. Unless there was one down the way. Let's sort. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I think you do need a... I think you do need the magazine.
All right. Because I think you need the magazine and you need a store that can do it. Which is gated by, like, content. I think we're ready to go. We are going to go fight the sorcerers. Um, and it takes a little bit, and it actually closes out disc one. So, uh, probably by the end of the stream today, we will have finished disc one. And uh, the game starts really going wild from there. Probably as the summer gets on, the streams will probably get a little bit longer, I will say, just so I can finish it up. And also, there might be some play I do off screen or off stream, um, just in, you know, for like things like finding be the better weapons later and things like that. <laughs> what does he mean the leader's role is vital? I don't understand. I'm Squall. Right. So he's saying, you got plan A, sniper. Plan two, someone just rushes the sorceress. This plan was devised carefully, which is why high schoolers are involved. <laughs> Covert operation. M must be achieved at all costs, even if they uncover the identities of the people involved. Um... Yeah, uh, well, so there was no disc swap moment in the other PC version either, and I think what happens is it just fades to black, and it gives you a save screen. You can save, and then it fades back in, as far as I remember. Okay, so Squall's volunteering to be the leader, even though he is obviously de facto the leader. So the gateway team will be Quistus. Selfie and Zell. So what's pretty interesting here now is that we have two different teams that are both doing things, and so they actually both need to be equipped with GFs. So having part of the reason that we made sure to get brothers just a minute ago is that you 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 kind of need as many as you can get here. Uh, instructor tre Trep here, uh, and he's got to like revise. Zell wanted to be a leader so bad, you know. <laughs> Scooter says you gotta you gotta attack the sorceress, make her make a bunch of concentration checks. It's true. She cast a mage hand. Having to remember everything. So now we're Quistus. Look at that. Like Squall left. All right. So we are going to. Oh, let's let's leave. Let's do that. And now we're Noah's back. Look at this. So she's trying to get back on the team. She's got some sort of ocarina. I don't know what this is. What is this? The Odin bangle. It suppresses the sorceress's powers. Named after Dr. Odin, who we will learn about later. Number one when it comes to magical goods. Quiz is doing the, the laughter jiggle. Hmm. Quiz is just roasting the shit out of Renoa. I think maybe we're meant to read there's a little bit of like a, a love triangle tension between Quistus, Renoa, and Squall. Because that is partially, I think, what's going on in the Quistus, Squall, in the training um, zone and all that kind of stuff. But I don't think that comes through very clearly. Clearly in the... Um, English translation, and maybe it's not in the Japanese version, but I, I, there's little glimmers of it, and it feels like it could, could, could have been there maybe, in uh, a different form. But also, she could just hate the idea that you know Renoa, it's all personal for Renoa. Who knows? I don't know. Who said this was a game? Look at that sweet ass nineties PC. Did you see that? Can I go back? Look at that. Look at that thing. Also, we can just talk to Renoa? Nope. They let you go back, but you can't talk to her. That's funny. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, we need to make sure that Irving is uh, equipped with some kind of stuff. We're going to overwrite here, because I believe both uh, groups fight. You know, they, they all have stuff going on. So let's look and see what's going on here. So, right, we have plenty of, of like, kind of free, whoops, 
once used. So let's just go ahead and take brothers off here. Um, and the reason I say that is that it will decrease Quistus's HP a little bit, but it will give an HP junction to Irving. Now, unfortunately, I think Irving does like no magic right now, so we got, we're gonna have to give some to him. Let's get an item in here and a a draw. HP plus 20%, so it's going to give him some hit points, but now we can use some abilities here. We can use, like, uh, I don't know, life magic? Yeah. Get a tent. Give it to Irvin. Let's do one of them here. We'll do, uh, I don't know, some, some cures. Give him 40 of those bad boys. Then we can go into the junction menu. And we can auto junction for defense. There we go. I thought he would have other things that he could junction to, but that's okay. That's perfectly cool. <laughs> the Donut Secret One points out that that does make it kind of seem like it's the only uh, room in the building. So Irvin's just going to be talking to us, and you can see this parade that's going on. So there's soldiers lining the streets, and they kind of determine where we can go here. I think we basically get funneled to the right zone. I say that, and it won't let me go to the left. So maybe we got to go this way. Can we not go? I mean, I, I know where we're supposed to go, but I forget how to get there. Maybe we were supposed to go across the street. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we can go over here. We can follow General Caraway. Oh, yeah. They're learning about the power of friendship. If you knew your enemies were pure evil, you'd get more fired up to fight them, wouldn't you? Right and wrong are not what separate us and our enemies. It's our different standpoints, our perspectives that separate us. Wow. Pretty morally gray, Squall. Squall, uh, Squall does not believe in the just war theory. We're also walking. We can't run. Oh, whoops. I've actually uh, accidentally turned on the times three mode. There's no good or bad. There's just two sides holding different views. All right. So they're there to do that thing. And we are going in. And we're going to climb up this ladder. Or maybe we got, we're supposed to go down the ladder? I don't remember. I should have been paying attention to General Caraway. Well, yeah. I think we're supposed to go down, right? We gotta go back to the big thing? Why did it let us come in here? We have to go back to the big main zone, right? Okay, we're chamber right here until 20. You can enter through this door. Okay. Okay. That's the gateway team. They're doing that. We got to go do a different thing. Don't we? I can't believe I was making fun of that, that uh, demo. And now I've totally forgotten where we're supposed to go physically. I know where we, we're supposed to end up. We're supposed to end up in the presidential house thing. But I forget how we're actually supposed to get there. But maybe I'm supposed to talk to these people first. Let's see. Great view from up here. It doesn't sound very fair to trap the sorceress. All right. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. So yeah, so let's go back to the big uh, loop-de-loop -loop zone where General Caraway was running around, and we'll go forward from there, like toward the, the, the screen, and then we should be good. I will never make fun of someone demoing something for me again. Seems deeply unfair. Do, do, do. Oh, I could have just followed him, huh? Oh yeah, because we have to go stand in the in the zone. Yeah, all right. We wait here. 
General, why is the sorceress decided to have such an extravagant parade? Sorceresses all love a parade. Hmm. So yeah, Galbadia Garden does not want her, right? They wanna they wanna get rid of the sorceress because she's gonna take over the garden. Galbadia Garden, not Balam Garden, where uh, our party is from. A different different garden. I love these like little flickering sprite people. They're great. So Quistus is worried about Renoa. Wants to go apologize to her. We can't just leave our post. This is, what a terrible idea. What like like true teen feelings, right? Like we all got to go hang out. It's a great lock of hair for sure. Modality, modality, uh, complimenting Caraway's hair. Look, he's right in front of us. We could we could run up and talk to him. That's right. Their post is very particular. They're supposed to be in that thing, and they're not there. They're over here. So partially what this is allowing us to do is uh, get our GFs in order. I think Selfie doesn't have anything in junction to her right now, right? Yeah, so let's... Um, Quistus has two, and Zell has two. One, just has Quetzalcoatl. Yeah, so let's take um, one of them off of Quistus here. Let's take Jablos off. Seems fine. Unfortunate losing uh, HPJ, but that's okay. And then we'll put Jablos there. And then uh, do that. And then GF. Draw. And then magic. Cool. Awesome. Oh, and then we'll save. It's a good question. That Pinguino asks, how many other games have parade floats? Uh, there is um, Cyberpunk 2077. It's got a parade float. That's all I can think of right now. There's got to be another. There's got to be another parade-based video game. Is there like Dark Cloud 2? I bet, I bet there's a parade in there. Hitman Blood Money. Absolutely. Donut Secret says, uh, Super Mario RPG? I don't know about that one. <laughs> Scooter says, I would contend that the menuing serves a pacing person purpose because it makes this more tense. I, yeah, sure. I mean, it's part of the flow of the game for sure, right? They assume you gotta do a lot of menuing. Ugh. Refactor's talking about the next kind of dungeon that comes up, and it's, uh, hot trash. I hate it. <laughs> but that's okay. So Renoa leaves. This is great. This is this is magic to me, right? So he was setting a timer on the door for it to lock. Renoa leaves. Door's about to lock. Team comes in who are supposed to be in their position. Locks behind them. Now they're locked in. Now it's goofy. This doesn't make any sense, right? Like this is like true like cinema sense goofery. But the kind of, uh, you know, genre thing going on here, I love. Like, what a weird confluence of things that happen to put everyone in a bad position. It is great. Right. I think that's right. So Eve Goldenwood says, people complain about this as a plot hole, but it's definitely uh, Quistus uh, going after Renoa. But it's definitely one of the things that makes it feel like an authentically teen move from Quistus, whereas her teacher storyline doesn't feel like a teen storyline. I think that's exactly right. Like, it's part of the genre here that she feels like apologizing for, like, yelling at her a couple minutes ago is more important than the mission, or at least she's unable to, like, distinguish between those two and their levels of importance. I think that's exactly right. It, like, sells her as a teen character. Uh, I mean, yeah, she, she it's an objectively bad choice. Uh, definitely don't think of it in terms of plot holiness. Yeah, they miss each other in the hallway modality. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, there's no... It doesn't make sense. But it's it's about, like, the product here. It's it's fun, I think. So Renoa's going to go try to get to the sorceress and maybe put that Odin bangle on them. So now uh, we are at, like, the president's residence. 
president's residence? President's residence. It's where presidents live. All right. Um, what does Squall got on him here? All right. So we we actually need to pull. Are we gonna have to fight something? As Renoa. I don't. Th I don't think we have to fight anyone as Renoa. So I'm not gonna junction any anything to Renoa here. And that might be the wrong call. So look, this is like a striving moment. So she's going to the president's place. She's going to try to sneak up, basically, on the sorceress and confront her. And she's like, you know, talking to herself as she walks up this thing. You know, I'm not a seed, but I can do stuff. I can do this. Right, right. Penguin. Thank you. It's been it's been a, a few years. I had to I had to think in my head. Do, do so we got to climb. Uh, you know her strategy for getting here to where the sorceress is is uh you know like climbing up uh the side of the building. <laughs> I, I, hard to know. Ooh, Pinguino, that's interesting. Yeah, I'll just get it later. Oh, we're starting to get, we get the theme, or we get like this, some sorceress music here. Hold on, let me, let me. great I think I think it's some great music all right so she's coming in, she's trying to trick her right paying my respects giving her a gift she's gonna put that Odin bangle on her and, and nullify the sorceress's power ooh blown backward huge mistake IMO Uh, what's going on? Whoa! Levitating. This is rad. This is so good. So levitated or knocked her out? It's funny, uh, everyone in the chat having a grand old time about the sorceress. So, right, she's like, you know, deceptive, scary, wizardess, sorceress, right? She's got this kind of deal going on, and she is like puppeting Renoa behind her, right? There's something going on with that. It's happening here. We don't really know much about it. And she's like roasting the shit out of everybody. Right? Um, and we don't really know a lot about it yet, but you know, we remember from some of the stuff that we've already heard in the game that the... Uh, the sorceress war happened in the past and that sorceress was defeated something going on and we haven't seen a sorceress in a very long time and now here's another one who's here roasting the shit out of everyone cheering for her
She's like mind controlling Renoa there. Or uh, like Psycho Mantis seen her. She's like, you know, dastardly and evil, right? A new era. And President D Ling is here. Oh! She's just doing straight up murders. We got this hot zoom out. Very good. She flings the president. He has stink clouds all over him for some reason. Mr. <laughs> Wolf says, I'm assuming now the Sorceress War was literally an entire army fighting just her. Could have been. Let us start a new reign of terror. So she's just evil as hell, right? Like objectively evil. And uh, everyone's just eating it up. They're having a good time. I'll let you live in a fantasy beyond your imagination. Cool. <laughs> the J-Max says, Are you a bad enough sorceress to disintegrate the president? <laughs> hey, there's that hatch we gotta go down. Remember that? Let us end this ceremony with a sacrifice. This is rad, too. This is some of the coolest shit that's ever been in a video game. Right? Like, Irvin wants to go help. Squall says, Look, it's the. We, we gotta do the mission. Quistus is seeing this happen, so we, we gotta escape. And I don't remember how you do that. Isn't there like a painting or something? Oh, yeah, here we go. It's like some secret panels and shit. Yeah, so you gotta pick up a glass from that thing, you put the glass in the hand of this uh, lady in the wall and we go down the passageway. Don't think too hard about it. Who cares? It's like a, sne a secret way out for the uh, Galbadian uh, general for when they do sedition on the state. So, makes sense. It does, yeah. Chamber of the Faith, uh, you know, all the cloister trials you kind of stuff has this kind of of, uh, in Final Fantasy X has this kind of, like, nefarious numinous thing going on. It's pretty cool. So we have, of course, my favorite. Uh, uh, dang darn uh, sewer level. I hate it. This is probably my least favorite thing in any video game. I hate this, this thing we have to do here. But it's not particularly interesting. I'm just gonna fight our way through it. Um, maybe I will... Here we go. We're gonna do it. We're gonna try out the times three here. I was just shitting on it before, but maybe it'll, uh, improve our combat experience. Especially because I didn't know you could just turn it on and off with L3. This is quite a bit better. We're going fast. We're hedgehogging this shit. There we go. They are spooky looking. It's the it's the, the demon guy from Okaje, right? Isn't that the name of that game? The JRPG? Alright. Uh we we gotta go to our GF. That was Ketsukoddle, right? Who did that? Yeah. So let's get him uh, let's get card mod. We're finding items from cards. It's not particularly exciting, but uh it'll help us later and let's see if we can get some mid level magic from our not mid-level magic. So so Thunder could turn into some Thundars, but not enough. We would need a lot more. Mid-level magic stuff is going to become a lot better once we start getting like a bunch of items that allow us to do stuff. But we can do this. Check that out. 
So we ride this little thing, and then we go through here. Yeah, Okaje the Shadow King. I played that game. I think it is, uh, basically if more street festivals look like this, I would go to them. Running through the crowd. And look who it is! Cypher is just, the, he's the most Kiefer Sutherland looking ass guy, you know? Look at that. Yeah, let's do it. Naruto run! Naruto run! Naruto run! Zoom! Cypher predates the Matrix, Pinguino. Yeah, you're right. Modality says that kind of cutscene plus the 3D thing, the 3D motion thing. It's it's rad. It's very good. Uh, let's go here. So really, the Wachowskis saw Cypher, and they thought, we got to get this in before the end of the year. I love that there's more than one person. Like, everyone sees these boxes and, like, this is how we're getting in. This is the way. Huh. All right. And here we go. I, the, uh, the Pinguino, I, I regret to inform you that uh, the uh, that trench coats were just cool in the 90s. Hmm. Pinguino was saying this is like my last chance to get the weapons monthly from the sewers. Because I would have to go back down there. I'm not going to do it. I'm just... Uh, it doesn't matter. Enough. For me to go and do it. So here I, here I go. We'll get the next one. Maybe we'll get that big red sword. Is that the one from here? All right, so we got, we're got we supposed to be getting Renoa here. Let me check. Uh, e oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's do some magic. Use some cures. So I, I'll... Uh, no, I'll heal everybody up. I was going to... I was going to maybe keep... Uh, Squall a little bit low for Renzo Kukinen, but I think I'd rather just have the uh, the buffer here. Oh, or the oh, or Noah's uh, the other way. Mmm, mmm, lizards. Here we are. So I believe this is where we do a thing. I love that they're explaining. Oh, this is Irvin's lemon break. Okay, okay. I was like, come on, bud. 
Irvin's Limit Break is pretty cool, so we, we need to... Uh, this is the first thing we have to do, right? All right, we got it. So that's Carbuncle. Carbuncle is the uh, new GF. Um, we just wanted to make sure that we got him. Break. Break is a really cool skill, uh, or a really cool spell. Um, I'm going to go ahead and scan these things to see what's up. It's very true. My talent says bottom half of these things is real roast history chicken vibes. It's true. I mean, what's a lizard if not half chicken, half creature? All right, so they only have about a thousand hit points each. It looks like they're weak against. Is that rock? Someone has given it the reflect power, and it uses petrify attacks. So um, let's just use some. Let's do some GF in here. I do think that there is. Uh, oh wow. I do think there's the possibility to have both of your, your people petrified here and uh, just lose. Like, I think that that's actually like a live possibility here. They're not weak against... Oh, well, let's see. Because uh, right fire, uh, they were strong against. But let's let's see what happens here. Oh, yeah, scooters. It, it, it's uh, So Carbuncle is really cool. If people don't know, don't know what Carbuncle is, it's a summon that's in a lot of Final Fantasy games. Oh, my gosh, I keep messing up this boost. Um, Carbuncle is cool in this game because it casts Reflect on all of your party members. And so for some bosses, it is not required, but it just makes your life a lot easier. Um, also, for bosses that have Reflect on them, you can bounce it off of yourself and hit them, which is pretty cool. Alright, killed them both. Yeah, right, so the Pinguino says Carbuncle basically solos the upcoming Adia fight, and yeah, that, that's kind of the deal. Carbuncle. Uh, he's a little cute little guy to boot. We no, just couldn't handle it. And Squall's thinking, you're not ready. You're immature. Look, and Squall's like, I don't... Why am I having to deal with this? Let me teen in peace! Alright, so we do want to... I do want to junction... Uh, normally you would junction like someone else, but I'm going to put Carbuncle on Squall, and part of the reason for that is that I know that Squall will be in the battle. In the final battle, and I don't remember who else will be. Um, and it's not going to matter a huge amount here. So we got move find here, magic, draw... Guardian Forces. Renoa's not going to need anything for here. And we want to see what Carbuncle can do. Look at him. Look at his little gremlin. Um, the... Okay, Pinguino saying Renoa and Irvin are going to be in the thing. So, HPJ, always good. Vitality plus 20%, that's pretty good. Counter is really cool. You can see it costs a lot of stuff. And then Recover Medicine... Uh, RF, so that getting items like the things that the feathers, for example, dropped off that monster, you can use those kinds of items to get recovery medicine, and then you can refine magic from that medicine, so that it kind of turns into this whole thing. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and get uh, HPJ and then MagJ first for these kinds of things, and uh, since Pinguino is telling us that we are going to have Renoa, whoops. Let's go ahead and give Renoa Carbuncle. Old Carbuncleino. There we go. And we'll do uh, GF. Draw and then magic. Cool. Here we go. We will get in the hatch where we're supposed to go here. And we'll get our sniper rifle. Now remember, if you don't remember what we were doing before, the general gist here is that the other team, the gateway team, needs to be in the gateway so they can trap the sorceress. We will be here with the sniper rifle. Squall uh, uh, and team and co. will be here with this, like, Call of Duty-looking-ass gun. And... Uh, then, then the sorceress will be taken care of. It's going to be easy. Easy mission. 
It's kind of weird they would introduce a character like that in such cool detail and then get rid of her immediately. But, um, you know, Squall's thinking about Cypher being dead, how weird that is. Or being alive, rather, not being dead. So everyone's freaking out. What's it mean? Because remember, last time we saw Cypher, he was in the uh, TV station, and he got phased into a wall. And he's asking himself, would I have to go through Cypher to kill the sorceress? Because that's like part of the deal, right? He's gonna, He might have to charge her as the leader. Uh, we got to remember that. And so he's thinking through all these things, and he just says, I might end up killing Cypher. Just like letting you know. FYI, I might have to kill your boyfriend, your ex-boyfriend. Juliet Pester says, God, these teens just leaning against stuff. Very true to life. It is true. You've had a lot of emotional training, Squall, to kill your enemies, including your best frenemy growing up. But they really want it to be all on Irvin, right? That that he will just do his thing. I've I cannot say I've ever seen his Dreamcatcher necklace before. Is he freaking out? Oh, it's really funny. The music is like super low down in there, but it's still around. Because the parade's happening out there. Irvin's just getting his headspace, but but this team's got to get their way to the thing. Whoops. Come on. Can I jump on this one? Nope. So some of the wheels you can jump on, some you can't. Um... This is just like a little dungeon, and you have to kind of trial and error your way around it. I don't remember how to do it, so we'll figure it out. We got Asuna. Asuna gets rid of status effects. So this wheel's turning the wrong way, so you can't go there. Can't go this way. So we got to go back across the ladder, come back this way, and go up the little stairs here. Got these little gremlins again. Yeah, the ability to turn this times three on during, like, uh, random trash battles is pretty sweet. Just stocking some draws. Yes, uh, Penguino pointing out that uh, some ga some of these gates open, these, like, little uh, uh, gateways on the pathways. Some of them open and some of them don't, and there's no way to know <laughs> until you try them. So it is extremely annoying. There we go. And we're going to go through here. Okay. And we'll go through. I'm literally, it's just trial and error. I don't actually know where I'm supposed to be going here. Okay. And we should be able to go up here. And this one open, this one open. So we go down here. And maybe over here? Nope, down here? Yep, all right. And maybe over here and then down here. I Again, I'm just hoping these work out. And then this way, nope, and this way, yep. We're just, we're looping. Wow. Selfie got hit pretty hard there. I'm gonna have her just keep stalking. Dang. So maybe this is the danger of times three. Is that you You also get hit really fast, but we can cast life. There we go. And just hope it does not kill Selfie again, although I think it might. It is going to. Is 
So let's draw. We'll just kind of keep draw casting life until we get the result that we want here. Um, which is killing this. Wow, really? Okay, here we go. Can we card this thing? Do it. Card it. Work. Do it. Ah, oh, damn it. Being able to, to times three on demand is pretty fun. Duel! Oof. I missed, I missed the, like, the D-pad. I, like, didn't hit the D-pad, right? Thanks for getting involved. I, I did not see what appeared there, but I appreciate you hitting the button. That's interesting, uh, Pinguino. I didn't know. Pinguino was saying that the, the creeps get pretty dangerous after a certain uh, a certain level. It's so a thing I, I uh, haven't really thought about in a long time is like the level of uh, like uh, danger capability, for lack of a better word, right? Like it's a it's a thing that. I think kind of passes out of a game like this. Like I, I remember a lot of plot beats and stuff like that, but I don't remember like what are the really difficult late game enemies. Um, which I think is pretty good. Hey y'all, it's raining. It's not rained here in like weeks, and we have had hundred degree weather for more than a week. So I think it's like tranquil, a little bit of rain here, which is excellent. So I think we're all the way back to the beginning. Is that true? Did I just walk my way all the way back here? But maybe I gotta go this way? I'm hoping this works out. Hey, there's the weapons monthly. Got it. It's a loop and then we go this way and I think that should be it. Yeah, here we go. So, but I can't come back on this side. Nope, I can't. Okay. All right, now we're back to the gateway. So this was the down, if you remember, like look at that little like uh, uh, thing going, right? So that's the thing I was going up for no reason because I didn't know what I was doing. So now we can go back here and we can go up the ladder. Do, 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 do. Bing, 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 bong. And here we are. Look at that. Everybody did it. Just in time. So it's 20 and the goofy Harlequin carousel goes up. Look at those little rabbit people. Did you see that? Yep. That's definitely how it works. Pinguina. Hit the switch! And I like that it physically makes you hit the switch. Like, what is this? What is this? All right, so Irvin's supposed to do it. And he can't. He can't handle the pressure. He can't change history. It's too much. Look, he just can't handle it. Like, uh, think, uh, the tension's just ramping up, y'all. Just a signal. It's not changing history. Uh, 
Circadian Wolf, that's exactly right. Maybe you should have had like a second person. Hey, did y'all forget this is Final Fantasy? There's spells and shit, y'all. Gun's not cutting it. Gun that fire metal bullet, not good enough. Right, so Squall is ready to go. So we get one more little chance here to do some stuff. Let's just make sure that we've got some uh, magic -y magic that we can, okay, we don't. <laughs> Let's make sure that we can use the magic -y magic uh, to get everyone's hit points up here. All right, and uh, then we'll be good to go. Basically this fight is uh, not, not, not super complicated. Well, here's the thing. There's a lot of magic bullets in this game. Didn't seem like you used one, though. It is great leadership. Scooter's pointing out. Squall had some pretty good leadership here. I really like this, uh, too. Squall steals a car. Like the presidential car, I guess. Like, who knew Squall could drive? Uh-oh. Who is it? Me. Yeah. This is me. This is me making my cipher right. Yeah. Yeah. You become the sorceress's lap dog. Gotta pet that dog. All right, so we got to fight Cypher. And we got to do this, right? We got to scan him. We got to know what's going on. And we'll learn more about Cypher in this whole knight thing later. He's got a thousand hit points. He's a sorceress's knight under a dia. He's weak against poison, bubbles, uses fire magic in conjunction with sword attacks. Remember, all the way back to the beginning of the game in that cutscene. Got a lot of hit points up there. His intelligence not super high. His dexterity very low. I love that he's got little little stats up here with the thing. But a thousand hit points. I do like you can just scan anyone on the planet. Know what they're about. Get a little bio clip about them. Alright, so 84. Let's use some Ifrit on him. Not until I fulfill my dream! Now, what Cypher's dream is is unclear. The last thing he said was that he was interested in becoming some sort of knight. And he wanted to do a good thing before, right? He wanted to, like, complete the mission. But he beefed it. And got taken. And I think a question, you know, a going concern is, is Cypher mind-controlled? You know? I don't know. Thing to consider. So he's got about 700 hit points remaining. For some reason, I didn't get the slashy slash there. Now, what can we draw from Cypher? I wonder what uh, draw casting fire on him. Is that better than attacking him? Let's find out. It is better than attacking him. So he's got about 600 hit points or so. Mm, not bad. So he's going to change his move setup, I think, a little bit here. I think it's more fun to do the thing here. It's true, so you're getting pointing out the teens have a tendency to drop their life goals at the drop of a hat, so or to change their life goals at the drop of a hat. So Cypher's whole deal. So he's got about six hundred hit points left. This is gonna take about two fifty. So he'll be at uh three fifty. So basically two ifrits will should clear us up here. 
only got to 98. Jeez. Okay. Eve Goldenwood says, It's remarkable how well this whole sequence holds up to my memories of playing it for the first time. I think it's incredibly strong. Like, everything, like, Galbadia Garden forward here. I mean, I guess the the tomb is a little bit odd. Uh, but but I guess, like, after you come back from the tomb, maybe. Uh, I think all that's really cool and consistent. Like, pacing-wise, amazing. I think, I think pacing can often be really hard in an RPG, just period. Like, any type of RPG... Uh, because there's so much room for like human tinkering, right? Like that's that's part of the th the thrill of an RPG, and so this whole end of disc one of bouncing back and forth between two different perspectives and storylines, and then uh, you know ratcheting up the tension on this, all these timers that exist, you know, like it's going to happen at twenty, and that doesn't matter for us phenomenally, but within the game world, that gives a really clear within the diegesis, I guess, it was a very clear set of goals that we're we're aiming for. Uh, that makes the like we got here just in time and then it ticks over like that's cool that that works really well So I think it's really um, You know kind of a if you were looking at like how to how to make an RPG and how to make pacing feel right with a narrative RPG This is great. I don't know if I like this remastered idea thing All right, Renoa feeling better about her whole deal and Irvin feeling bad about his whole deal, but uh, we can carbuncle. We'll see carbuncle for the first time. Oh, I hope I hope it doesn't kill Renoa. Okay, it won't. So we're just gonna start using GFs, um, and like as many as possible, as soon as possible. I'll scan her. I probably should have scanned her before. We're gonna get Ifrit first, a little bit faster. I can't believe I reset that. I was looking at the chat while I was hitting. You should never try to look at chat when trying to use GF boost. It just doesn't it doesn't work out that way. Three eighty three. So the next thing I'm going to have Squall do is uh, do it. All right. So here's Carbuncle. We're going to see what Carbuncle looks like. There it is. Do. Laser beaming everyone, and I will tell you, the first time I played this game, I had no idea what this was. I was like, why would you bother? He is a little friend. He's great. But they, uh, he just casts Reflect on the whole party, and that's pretty cool. Really helpful here when she's doing a lot of these, like, single target, uh, castings. You can really, if you practice, you can really get good at the brother's timing. I like that Dio was like spinning as she <laughs> flew out of the sky there. This is which animation tailored to the fight stage. So let's uh, cast scan here and let's see what's up. She's got, ooh, 4,600 hit points. Remaining. Her sorcerer's powers may be the most powerful in the world. It's got quite a bit of hit points. That's a great that's a great story, Eve Golden Woods. I guess you should just attack. I don't really have anything good going on here. And let's see, we said forty six hundred or so? Right, so uh, that just dispelled on uh, on Squall there. So she dispelled, and she's going to kind of keep casting Dispel. And so basically I think what Carbuncle does here is kind of hard lock what's going on because she will just spend her turns uh, trying to dispel the Reflect rather than actually attacking. So it kind of breaks the fight a little bit. I don't think, because she has Dispel, I don't think she'll just cast right into it. Although, hopefully she does, so we get to see some cool reflected stuff. Uh, Julia Pester, I think both are great. I, I refuse to engage with this combat between those two things. Julia Pester is asking which which has the better 
Disc 1 and Final Fantasy uh, 8 or Final Fantasy 9, I think they're both great. They're both excellent. And I would take both of those on, over Final Fantasy 7 any day of the week. I totally beef this. When no one could see my boosts, they were great. And now that you can see me doing it, they're not as good anymore. I beefed it. I did beefed it. Oh, Zeno, it's the best two out of three. All right, so she's dispelled from everyone just in time for Carbuncle to happen one more time. And we're going to keep doing this. So, I, unfortunately, not the world's most exciting battle. I'm going to take it up to times three. Whoa. I do have to take it down from times three, otherwise hitting these things is pretty hard. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, crap. I need my boost. Getting getting too ahead of myself with these uh, powers I have. These magical powers. Also, I haven't been keeping up with my numbers. You know I like to have the number in my head, but each run is about 1,000 hit points, a little bit short of 1,000 hit points, so... Doing okay. But yeah, look, she's just going to keep dispelling, and so... Next time Renoa is up, we're going to do Carbuncle again. Yep. And I'm not going to bother boosting. It's probably better just to let this go in fast motion. Probably more efficient. Because what's the difference here? Yeah, it's about 70 hit points or so. And she's just going to keep doing it. She's going to dispel from everybody. This is very funny to watch in fast motion. <laughs> Basically, this fight is solved, and we're just, like, going through the motions. Um, but I think that's kind of fun, too, to be like, hey, this is just done. Yeah, they are really game for just getting summoned again and again. You know, they're like, all right, I guess that's my job. Like, time time for Brother War. One, two, three, Brother War. It's the Brothers War. Here we go. Bye-bye. I do like occasionally that that, that Renoa just stops and shoots her with her little weapon thing. Let's go ahead and I'll go ahead and carbuncle again. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna scan because I'm just curious where we are. I think we're at like twenty five hundred. Eighteen hundred is what it looked like. Zoom! Yeah, modality is talking talking about like Final Fantasy is kind of like figuring out the little puzzle and then just like going from there. the The good thing is like we can actually do that here, right? That like I can actually take them. Just you know, I know what the puzzle is. Let's just do it. If we had slightly better GFs equipped to this team, it probably would go a little bit faster, but that's okay. So it's basically uh, two more runs of Ifrit, two more runs of Brothers, and then we'll be done. Yeah, FF5, is that's kind of the whole thing with FF5, right? It's not one that I played a huge amount of. I guess I got it uh, maybe when Anthology came out. For the PS1, I think it's the last time I played it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lilifin's also talking about four job fiesta. Like that, that is kind of the the uh, thrill of it. Here we are, I'm a little creature. I remember when this game came out. There was all like fun fan art of Carbuncle in particular. He's a cute little guy. There's really not that many cute little guys in this in this game, unfortunately. There we go. Impudent Seeds. That's it. 20 AP. That's great. Where's she going? Oh, nowhere.
Absolutely brutal. Right in the shoulder. Right in the McLean. Very good. And that's the end of disc one. Wow. Right. Modality pointing out, like, if the, the, you know, this being the end of disc one, you could be like, this is another heiress. Oh, shit. It's pretty great. All right. Wait. Whoop. Don't, don't do it. So now we're flashing back. Normally, you would have to change out some discs and stuff before this happens. So there's like a cold cut. And so I'm going to stop this right now. Uh, thanks to everyone for doing it. We're going to pick up with disc two starting next week, next Thursday. We'll be right back at the same time, same place, same channel. Like I said, I think the, the streams will slowly get a little bit longer as the summer goes on. I am going to have a little bit of an interruption in my life in the next two or three weeks just because some external stuff. But the, the stream should remain uninterrupted. And if they are, I will let everyone know. On twitter.com slash range touch or uh, twitter.com slash c kunzelman. If you want to check out the VOD for this or uh, any of the other VODs that we've been checking out, you can go to youtube.com slash ranged touch or go to ranged touch.com to see more of all the other stuff we do. You can go to patreon.com slash range touch to support us if you want to. And uh, you should, number one, smash that follow button if you don't already. We're going to be doing a uh, prepare to give stream, which is our big charity stream that we do on range touch every year. We're going to be doing that for Elden Ring All Remembrances on July 16th, starting at 11 a.m. Eastern. We're going to have a lot of information about that coming forward. We'll have guests and blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. But just letting you know about that, it's going to be here. So hit the follow button right now so you can learn about it when it happens. Uh, if you've got a Twitch Prime subscription running around or you just want to give us five bucks, you can do that right now, and that would be super sweet. Um, or you can go to patreon.com slash range touch to support the stream and everything else that we do. We do a bunch of podcasts. I promise if you enjoy watching me play Final Fantasy VIII and talking about it, you're going to love listening to us talk about all kinds of other media stuff like Fallout or Homestuck or Stephen King. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Like, uh, you know, I, it's really great to see some of the same names every week, and it's really cool to see new people too. Um, and I really appreciate it. If you like the stream and you think it's fun, Tell your friends about it. We don't do any advertising here on Wrench Touch other than word of mouth. So uh, think about doing that. I'll be back next Thursday. Uh, and uh, I'm excited to dig into to disc two. This is actually one of my favorite parts of the game. Just like the stuff that's going to happen in the next two or three hours in the game. So I'm really excited about it. YouTube.com slash Wrench Touch for the VOD on Saturday. And I'll see you all next week. Goodbye.